welcome back. Now, most Brexit supporters argue we'll eventually be better off outside the EU, but those who want to remain say membership is crucial for our economy. While a new book, The Left Case Against the EU, offers a different perspective. And joining us now is its author, the former Syriza MP and the professor of economics at SOAS, Kostas Lapovitsas. Thank you very much for being with us. It's a pleasure. So, from your perspective, what kind of Brexit should the UK Parliament go, be going for? I think much of the debate on Brexit is focused on trade deals. That's misleading, and that's why the debate has been uh, aimless and has frustrated the British people. I don't think that's the answer to what Brexit we need. The, the answer is about restructuring and rebalancing the British economy. The Brexit is an opportunity to rebalance the British economy, to move it away, in other words, from overbloated services towards industry, manufacturing, towards creation of productive jobs, towards that kind of thing, which requires a strategy, industrial strategy, impossible within the European Union. Do you think that the vote to leave was a rejection, if you like, of um, globalisation, of the kind of industries that the UK has? I don't think it was a conscious rejection of that. It was a frustration uh, among the British people, the poor, the working people, class, the working people of this country, with the conditions that have been imposed on them the last uh, several decades. And it found an opening and it welled up. Uh, people are looking for something new. They know that the way they live doesn't work and they are looking for fresh ideas. Trade deals, Norway plus, Canada minus, uh, and there's something squared. That's not the answer. So the answer actually, is domestic, domestic uh, strategy, domestic policy. So leaving without a deal may not be a bad thing in your view? I think we want a deal for sure. Uh, and it's incredible that we're in this position uh, after two years. What, is the, what has the government been doing? Uh, however, I don't fall for the um, fear campaign. Uh, I read, for example, the uh, report by the Bank of England uh, a few days ago, and my answer to that is similar to what Paul Krugman has to say, or Mervyn King has to say, really? Is this what's going to follow if we exit without a deal? 10% contraction of GDP, are they serious? So we, we do want a deal. Finding ourselves in a position where no deal is no good, it's a responsibility of the government, but let's have some perspective and let's be clear. Brexit is also about democracy and about sovereignty, and there is no price for those. At the same time, though, um, you say that you are sceptical about the Bank of England's predictions, but there are a huge, there is a huge body of economic analysis that says we will be worse off if there's no deal uh, or outside of the European I Union. Do no, you dismiss that? I am no supporter of no deal. The country needs a deal. The country needs uh, a trade arrangement. Europe is its biggest trade, uh, trading partner. Obviously, we need to continue trading with Europe on reasonable terms. And as I say, it's amazing that the, country, the government has not uh, achieved that. However, I'm not prepared to be blackmailed, because uh, that's what's happening here. And the Remain side, which, rem remember, used to tell us that the world would uh, collapse around our ears if we voted for Brexit uh, back in 2016. Well, it hasn't. So uh, there is definitely a fear campaign. Uh, the country needs, obviously, to put its case uh, on a different basis uh, to the European Union right now. Do you think that other countries may follow the UK in voting to leave the EU or, or, or your scepticism, if you like? I'll tell you what I think about that. There is a, a, there's an image in this country that's been created about the EU, which is of this uh, entity out there which is doing well, it's strong, it's advancing onward and upward and, and, and all this. It's not. It's an existential crisis. It's in deep crisis, political crisis, economic crisis and social crisis. It's obvious. The thing doesn't work. It's a straitjacket on Europe. It's actually preventing ordinary people from conducting their lives in the way in which they wish to conduct it. And there is rebellion against it. Rebellion from one end of Europe to the other. Not necessarily conscious, but rebellion against the conditions of it. So what's your prediction then of what will happen? My prediction is that the monetary union, which is the backbone of the European Union, will not last uh, in the indefinite future. Once that goes in one way or another, then the European Union itself will change dramatically. Uh, all, all you've got to do is look at France right now. France, which is the other half of the core of the Union with Germany, is in deep trouble, deep trouble, because it cannot basically survive with Germany in the European Union. That's basically what's happening. So something deep, something profound is going to happen in Europe. The danger there is, if we continue bypassing democracy, and all this talk about the second referendum, about uh, basically bypassing the democratic will of the British people, uh, goes into bypassing democracy, um, 
the right wing we gained, the extreme right in particular, um, the almost neo fascist right in various parts of Europe. That's the real threat. And it's the European Union that's doing it. It's the European Union that's generating this danger. I mean, at the same time, though, uh, people who back the EU would say that we've enjoyed an incredible time of peace in Europe. And part of that is because of the unity uh, of the European Union. I've heard this story so many times, and I understand it comes from a good place. People want to see solidarity, peace, amicable relations among European people. Who wouldn't? I, I personally, I myself, am a, a product of this uh, situation the last uh, several decades. You know, I was born a Greek, I'm proud of it. I live in England, I'm proud of it, and so on. However, it's not the European Union that has done that. The European Union right now is creating divergence in Europe, divergence and discord in Europe. And it's bypassing democracy, and that's what we've got to bear, bear in mind. Okay, thank you very much for sharing your views with us this morning. I thank you. Let's have a check now on the weather.